Okay, so for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be creating this material on a sphere. I'll just go out of my camera. I've got three area lights in the scene. Lighting is extremely important whenever you're creating materials. But if you check the description or the top comment, you can go ahead and download the studio setup so that you can follow along without any issues. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to start by going to Create, Shader, Cinema 40 Octane, Create an Octane Material, drag and drop that onto your sphere. Let's make sure we also go into our plugins and open it up our Live Viewer and just send the scene over to your Live Viewer so we can see what's happening over here. And then just double click on the Octane Material and open up your Node Editor. So let's go ahead, select the Octane Material, go to Basic, put your Material Type on Glossy so that I actually have uh, access to Specular. So go ahead and sele select the Specular and I want to decrease this float value. So I'm going to put mine on 0 0.03 and the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want this material to be very reflective or very shiny. We are trying to replicate a fabric material so I want the, the overall glossiness to almost be very close to matte. So on a very low value like this I'll be able to achieve that. I also want to go to my roughness over here and I want to add some roughness onto this material so I'm going to put my value on 0 0.66 and just press enter. Alright, so let's go ahead and actually start getting some color onto our sphere. So on the left hand side you'll see there's a whole lot of different colors here. I just want to pay attention to all of these green icons. These are all called generators and generators generate different patterns and effects for your material. So the generator that we're going to be using is called turbulence. So I'm just going to drag and drop that over here and I want to connect this to my diffuse. So you already see that we're getting this pattern on here that's a result of this generated turbulence. Okay, so I'll only be making one change to the turbulence and that is the octaves. I want to put this on 5. So the octaves and the omega basically determine how detailed the generator pattern is. You can see if I go ahead and decrease the omega, the lines get a lot more simple and that's exactly what it's doing to the generated pattern. Okay, so I want to put that back on 0 0.5 and 5 and the gamma controls how much of this pattern is visible or hidden. All right, but let's just put that back on the default 1 and let's continue. Alright, so a great way to add some additional color onto our material is to use another node which is a mapping node over here and we're going to be using the gradient mapping node. So just drag and drop that out. You'll see this line turns orange. When I let go it automatically connects everything for me. Okay, so the believability for this material so that it actually resembles something that looks like cotton is going to be reliant on this gradient. We don't want to go too crazy with the colors. Alright, I'm just going to be using some very basic gradients over here. I'm leaving this on the default black. So you can see on HSV everything is on zero. But with this value, I'm going to double click over here and I want to put my V on 31. Alright, so it's just going to make it a darker gray. So right now, this really doesn't represent anything that looks like cotton. And that's because we need to actually play around with some of the scaling of this pattern. So that's what, what we'll be doing next. Right, so select the turbulence and let's click on UVW transform. So you can see it automatically created this transform node for us. So the first thing I'm, that I'm going to do is I want to put my Z uh, over here on 90. And then I'm going to be playing around with the scale on the X, Y and Z axis. So I've got some predetermined values that I'm going to be inputting here. So on the X, I'm going to put 0 0.0064. Okay, so that's going to make a whole lot of uh, straight lines like this. On the Y, I'm going to put this on 0 0.04416. And there we go. Now you can already see it's starting to create this illusion that this is like almost like a cotton woven pattern that's on here. And we're just creating that illusion by adjusting these two values, the X and the Y. Alright, and now the last a bit of detail I want to add to this particular Octane material. So I want to select that. If I go to this option called Sheen, it's actually going to add a little bit of a highlight to these edges. But I want to make it very, very subtle. So I'm going to put this on 0 0.03 and pay attention to these edges. It just adds a little bit of a highlight. Now this can really come in handy if you're maybe trying to create fabric materials like satin. Uh, but with fabric, I tend to add just a little bit of a sheen layer just so it can capture some highlights on the edges. 
Okay, so at this point you could be done, but I want to show you guys how to add an additional layer of detail on you. I want to show you how to add some very subtle fabric imperfection. So maybe stuff that looks like folds or anything like that on the fabric itself. It's a nice additional layer that we can add on top of this material. So to do this, we'll be using a node over here, a mapping node that is called Mix. So just drag and drop that out there. So this Mix Texture node allows you to mix two textures together and control the amount of how much should be visible between those two mixed textures. So this is actually going to be applied into the bump. Okay, so we're going to get some additional detail on top of this fabric. So let's go ahead and set up those two generators that are going to generate the fabric imperfection for our material. Okay, so we're going to be using another turbulence uh, generator and I'm going to connect this to texture 1. Right, so you can already see just by connecting it into texture 1 and into the bump we're already getting some imperfection on our material over here and it's always these really small details that just add to the overall realism of any material because I feel like without this bump it just looks too too simple and it just looks very CG. There's no variation or breakup in the overall surface of the material. So by creating this additional bump layer, we add in some more detail and believability onto our fabric material. So I'm going to select my turbulence and I'm just going to put my omega on 0 0.39 and press enter. Now I also want to go ahead and select my turbulence and click on UVW transform. Okay. And I want to adjust my scale over here. So I want to make sure this is ticked for uniform scale. And I'm going to put this on 0 0.68 and press enter. So now you can see, just pay attention to your material. You can see where all of this imperfection uh, is being created. So we created our fabric imperfection layer. Let's create a wrinkles and folds layer as well. And we'll be doing that with turbulence. So just connect that connect to texture 2. Now over here I'm going to put my octaves on 5 just to add a little bit more detail to the generated pattern. And then I'm going to select this and I'm going to open up my UVW transform. Okay, and Let me just bring this transform node down here. Now I'm going to put my Z value over here on 90. And I'm going to be adjusting these values independently. So on the X I want this value to be 0. 141011 and on Y I want this to be on 1.793624 and press enter. So now if you pay attention you can see it started adding these lines over here. Uh, just some procedural uh, what, what I would consider wrinkles or folds that are on top of this material. Okay, so just to show you the difference that this bump layer makes, if I remove that, we've just got these perfectly straight lines, but adding this bump layer adds some more variation to our fabric material, which I personally think just makes it look a little bit more believable. Now, if we select our mixed texture over here, we can determine how much of the surface imperfection or these folds and wrinkles we want visible. So by default, it's on 0 0.5, which is a 50% mix value. But if I move this to the left, I've got more surface imperfection visible. If I move it to the right, we've got more folds visible. Now you have to find a really good balance over here. The 50% balance I think is pretty good by 0 0.5. But another great way of controlling, like let's say we still think these wrinkles are too intense, you can just select the turbulence and bring down the power. You can see I can make those wrinkles very subtle just by doing that, just by controlling the power slider and obviously I can do the same for the surface imperfection. So it's a great way to have some control over that. Okay, so now we've created our fabric material. Remember you can always go back and maybe choose, uh, like select the turbulence, go to projection and try different texture projections. Maybe the XYZ to UVW will work out better for you. Right, it depends on the mesh that's being used. For this sphere, because it's unwrapped and it's got its own UVs, the mesh UV works best on this particular sphere. But maybe on another piece of geometry that's more complex, or maybe a t-shirt, you might have to play around with texture projection unless you've set up uh, UVs in a very specific way to take full advantage of this material. But I thought I'd just show you that. But anyway, there we go. The fabric material has been created, and I showed you how you could push it a little bit further by creating uh, these additional turbulence and attaching it to the bump. 
All right, so that is the end, but with a procedural material, it's never the end. You can go back. Remember, maybe you want to adjust your turbulence or select the transform and maybe adjust the scale over here. Let's say I want a universal scale. Remember, I can increase that and get some other uh, different effects. But I remember I, I basically took quite a bit of time to try and figure out how to create this pattern because we don't have a lot of generators over here. So I felt that turbulence worked out pretty well. And I think that this looks quite believable. It looks like a fabric material. Even if you apply it onto a t-shirt, it will look, it'll definitely look like a fabric material. You might just have to adjust the scale or different projection types so that it looks better on whatever model you are using. But now you know how to set this up. It's actually pretty simple. If you're just looking at the shader tree and there we go. Anyway, stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials. I truly appreciate the support on this channel and goodbye. <laughs>